Hello, Akua here. I also respond to Aqua and Akua. I'm an executive coach and strategic advisor, and my favorite thing to do is to support leaders so that they can focus and connect to scale. And the reason why I love to focus on helping leaders really with their productivity and with their engagement is because I want them to love themselves love their work, and ultimately love their life. And so today, what I really wanted to talk about is, I would say, the core of all the work that I do. It's the reason I actually got interested in coaching. It's the reason why I really enjoy my work. And that's the word, the term, the, the topic of self-awareness. And at the core of everything that I build, everything that I share, it's all around building my own awareness and helping others build their awareness. Because it's really through building your awareness where alignment comes. It's really through building your awareness where you start to really have a good sense of your purpose, of the legacy you want to build, the type of impact that you want to have. If you're not aware of your own strengths and weaknesses, of your likes and your dislikes, of your personality, of your triggers, of things that you enjoy, of how you want to be recognized, it's going to be really hard for you to say that you've achieved what you've wanted to achieve. And I think that we spend so much of our time as human beings actually being focused on what's important to other people, right? As you know, animals, as social beings, we do spend a lot of time around other people. And sometimes we do take on the interests, the, um, the ideas, the desires of others. And that's why through building your own self-awareness, you really can become a lot more connected to yourself and a lot more connected to what you really wanna do so that you feel fulfilled Right, And so you are also able to, to look out into the world, feel comfortable, feel genuine. And I think most, you know, most importantly in the word I like to use in alignment. All right, so what I'm gonna be talking about today is a document, a resource that I put together that's also in my Leadership Lab portal. So if you're interested in my Leadership Lab portal, it costs absolutely nothing to you to join. All you have to do is register. I'll put a link below. In there, I have some of my favorite leadership-focused and self-leadership-focused content. These are all resources, workshops, videos that I think are key skills that we need to learn and continue to grow as leaders. So I've put together this portal and what I'm doing is talking through each of the resources and giving you a little bit more of a background, talking a little bit more how to use them and talking also about how I've used them in my life as well. Everything that's in the Leadership Lab portal I use and that I also use with my clients. Most of them are actually created based on questions that I got from my clients or questions that I got from people in my audience. So in order to build your self-awareness, where do you start? A lot of times people ask me, where do you start? And I always talk about how there are three basic ways to build your awareness. The first is by getting feedback, so asking other people. Another way is through leveraging assessments, which is something I love to do. And if you've looked at any of my content, you know I love sharing content around using assessments. Every single week, I'm probably using a new quiz, assessment, psychometric. I've used all different kinds of invested in a lot. And I also use several of my clients because I'm certified to administer several. And the last way is just to take the time to reflect and engage with yourself. That's also an additional way to build your self-awareness. It's the fastest way to build your awareness. It's the cheapest way to build your awareness. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about today. The particular document we're gonna be talking about, the resource we're gonna be talking about is my likes and my dislikes, or I think I called it my adore and ab abhor list. So something a little bit different, just a little twist on it. And I think this is such an important activity to do. For some of you watching this or listening to this, if you're listening to the recording, it might sound so simple, but you'd be surprised. Um, if I ask you just today, what do you like or what do you dislike about your personal life? Would you be able to tell me? How often do you actually take the time to, to actually think about those things. And, and that's really what I do with my clients, right? So my clients invest in me to help create the space so they're in the right mindset that they can sit down and think about what they like and what they don't, what they like and what they dislike at the end of the day. And I also am able to help them work through some of their limiting beliefs, some of their assumptions, um, you know, some of their schemas and some of their interpretations as well. So they're able to achieve their goals they're looking to achieve. But it first starts with recognizing that you don't like something or you dislike something or something feels off. You have to be aware of that to begin with. And that's why I think starting with this adore or abhor list is a really great way to begin to build your self-awareness. And it's something that you can do every so often. So let's get into it. As always, I have notes. So if I'm looking down or looking around it's because I wanna make sure that I'm covering everything. So. Let's see here. 
So I just put down a really quick definition of self-awareness because I do think that's really key. You know, at, 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 its, at its most bare minimum, it's really about understanding your strengths and weaknesses. I think another thing to add is that you need to recognize that your personality, your triggers, how you show up does have an impact on others. And I truly believe the more that you work on your own self-awareness and become aware of how you feel, your emotions, where you are mentally, where you are physically, it's a lot easier to see it in others, all right, if that makes any sense. So the more you work on your own self-awareness, the more aware you usually are of others and where they are at in their journey of self-awareness as well. So what is this adore and abhor list? All right, so to get started on your alignment journey, you should keep track of your attitude towards certain activities, tasks and responsibilities you have. You can do this particular activity in your personal or your professional life. I typically like to combine the two because one of the things that I've seen and I believe, and I think that this is definitely true, um, is that our personal lives and our professional lives intermingle, intermix. There's really no way to separate the two at the end of the day. We're human beings. And as much as we'd like to think that sometimes we can compartmentalize, it's not true. They're gonna somehow engage at some point in time, especially now that we're working mostly remotely as well. So. This activity, and I've said this already, seems incredibly simple, but will help you gain clarity of what you need more of, right? So it's really about asking yourself, okay, what do I enjoy? What lights me up? What do I want to keep doing, all right? And what you would like to cut out. So if you feel like something's wrong, something's off, but you haven't taken the time to build awareness about what's really happening, it's going to be really hard for you to have a conversation with important people in your life or even a conversation with yourself to really understand what you need to change, shift, or do differently. All right, so people who are inspiring leaders, aligned executives, successful business people, take the time to consciously build their self-awareness so that they're able to delegate tasks in their personal and professional life or eliminate responsibilities that are no longer serving them. And this is a really key thing. And I love talking about this. One of the things I always love to talk about is what are you doing with your eight hours? And really recognizing that a lot of what you're doing within your eight hours is probably not helping your bottom line if you're a businessman. And if you're someone who has goals, it might not help be helping you reach your goals. So building your awareness around what you like and what you don't like and what you're doing within those eight hours can really help you recognize what should I really be doing? And if we connect this back to this bigger idea or this big idea, sorry, a bigger ideal of trying to achieve your 2021 goals or vision, right? Taking the time to have a list of what you like and what you dislike will help you understand once again, where you should be investing your time, what you could potentially offload, right? If you need to invest an additional person to help you with those pieces as well. All right, so let's get into it. Simple, simple instructions. And once again, you can download the document so you can go along with it um, with me and you can actually use this. It's super simple or you can just get a sheet of paper and actually do it yourself. But the idea is really that over the course of a week, whenever you feel excited or good, annoyed or hate something, okay, what I want you to do is write it down. And the more specific you can be, the better, right? If you can talk about the emotion or feeling behind that specific activity, task or thing you need to get done, it's going to be a lot easier for you to look back when you're done doing this and really understand where your head was at, what you really want to offload, what you might want to delegate, and maybe even what you want to cut out. Okay, start to notice if there's any patterns. If something comes up multiple times, put a tally or number next to it. So for example, one of the things that I have to do, right, consistently might be posting on LinkedIn. So posting on LinkedIn seems like a super easy task, but there's a lot that actually goes in putting together a LinkedIn post. I typically have to do a bit of research, see if I've written anything about it before, got to write the thing, and then I need to post it, right? And then sometimes I want to engage with it or engage with people who are posting on it, right? So if I decide that that's something that I have to do every single day of the week, right? And it takes a ton of energy from me, what can I do to help reduce, right? The amount of energy that has to go into posting every single day some potential ideas can come up, right? So this is when we can start brainstorming. So one idea would be maybe I can spend just one day a week coming up with all my posts and schedule it out, right? So I'm just using all that energy one day so I don't have to do it every single day, right? The only thing I would have to do every single day is maybe just engage with that post um, if somebody comments or maybe do a quick edit if I notice there's a grammatical error, right? So that way I'm not using energy every single day. I've done it all at once and I feel a lot better. And throughout the week, I'm like, la di da I don't have to spend time on that. Okay. Another thing you can also do is just maybe decide that, hey, maybe posting on LinkedIn doesn't make sense. It's not improving my bottom line. I'm not getting visibility and value I want out of it. I should eliminate it, right? But it's only through self-awareness where I'll start to recognize, once again, this pattern. 
another thing that could happen. Hey, you know, I have some additional revenue. Why don't I invest in someone to help me write these posts? That way, right, I'm not involved in it. All I have to do is maybe check it to make sure they're doing it. All right. So those are three different different ways to approach this issue or challenge I came up with of posting on LinkedIn because I recognized that posting on LinkedIn brings me anxiety or I feel overwhelmed or I don't like it. Right. So what's a different what's a different approach to posting on LinkedIn every single day? Batching it, right? Deciding I don't need to do it or hiring somebody else to do it, right? And that's really what this list will help you with. It will help you really once again recognize what you enjoy doing and what you don't enjoy doing or what you recognize isn't leading to the results that you want. All right, so you might wanna create a separate list for your personal and professional life. I mentioned this before. Personally, I like to combine it and then I'll sort of, you know, put the topics where they need to go, all right? And finally, I would really suggest that you redo this exercise every few months to see if there's a change in your attitude or your task, all right? So those are the really simple instructions, all right? I gave you a really quick example, right? But this piece of paper, this document, right, if you wanna download it, two simple sides. The first side is what you like, right? So the adore side, right? So these are things that you're excited, right? You feel great doing, you look forward to, and you simply enjoy it, all right? And then on the other side, the dislike or the abhor, you don't look forward to it, you feel terrible, you hate doing it, you dread it. And once again, you wanna be as specific as possible, all right? So I would just love to challenge you to always just think about the tasks that you're doing, the responsibilities that you have, and whether or not you like or you dislike them. That is really the foundation of self-awareness. And it's really through, once again, building that foundation of self-awareness where it'll be so much easier for you to also see in others whether they like or they dislike something. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're as engaged as possible in the tasks that you have to do, especially as a leader. If you have other people that you can delegate to or you have the resources to delegate to contractors or experts, why not do that? So that you can spend your time and energy on things that you enjoy and that you know really light you up. All right? So that's what I have for you today. I just wanted to share that. Once again, it's another one of the resources that I have in my Leadership Lab freebie library. If you have any questions for me, any thoughts for me, if you'd be open to doing a workshop on this, please do let me know. But thank you again for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, bye.